today I'm going to be wiring up some crossovers. Hopefully get that mounted, get the drivers in there, turn them on and at least listen to them. This design actually incorporates a piezo horn tweeter and there's a lot of research you can do on piezos. Some people hate them, some people love them, some say they're good if you work with them right. Uh, all I know is I was mainly looking for it for aesthetics, but who knows, if I can get it to sound good, that would be a, a double plus. Just got, uh, you know, a little bit of work ahead of me here with soldering up wires to these things and putting on terminal ends and all that tedious stuff, mounting them, and but it's fun. I love it. All right, so let's talk a little bit about piezo tweeters. Piezo tweeters have been around for a long time and they're gonna be around for a long time. And basically, you can't really see what's inside of there, but from what I understand, it's a ceramic disc and it's very small, but it makes this speaker very efficient. Now, from what I understand is that this does not present any kind of a load to the crossover. So to make this be seen by the crossover, we need to actually simulate a load for the amplifier. So what I've got is a couple of eight ohm resistors and they're just gonna be wired so that it bridges the positive and the negative. The piezo tweeter, the way that the amplifier sees it is more similar to a a, a capacitor. You know, basically, it's going to filter out low frequencies. That's why they say you can use these piezo tweeters without a crossover because theoretically you can. You're not going to burn it out, you know, putting base to it. As far as I know, um, it should filter it out by itself. But there's no other crossover mechanism inside of here. Now, some piezo tweeters do have something inside of it. This one does not. So I will be using an 8 ohm resistor and I'll hot glue that somewhere to here, maybe even like right there, because I think it'll still fit in the cabinet, and just solder these on there, okay? Now that will allow me to cross this tweeter over properly with the 8 ohm crossover that I just soldered all the leads to. All right, so I just wanted to kind of cover that. As far as sound quality of piezos, it's anybody's guess. I mean, I haven't plugged this in to listen to it yet. I don't have a speaker built yet, so I couldn't tell you right now. You'll go through the listening experience with me when I fire up those realistic MC1800s for the first time. Uh, but from what I gather is that when people get into situations where they say they don't sound good to them, it's usually because they're not crossed over or that they are resonating and or not crossed over. So I'm going to be combating that in two different ways on this one. This is kind of thin, brittle plastic. I don't know what kind it is, but I figure I will put some Silas on there too, just to kill some of that resonance.
Wow. Well, sometimes you just gotta take a break and kind of take stock of um, what <laughs> what you got going on so far. That's what's up right now. It's a good cup of coffee. We've got the piezo horn tweeters that I've decked out with a resistor and the stylus sound deadening. I try to give this tweeter every fighting chance it possibly has to sound good. So uh, I've got that going on. Um, I've got the crossovers are all wired up. These were the type that you need to solder the leads onto. So that's ready to go in the box. Um, as far as the box goes, the box I've got almost completely ready. It is almost entirely lined on the inside with Silas, with the exception of just a few places, one of them being the top of this brace. There's an area in here that doesn't have it. There's a couple of really small areas in here that don't have it. Taking every preventative measure I can to combat resonance, take and put a little piece of the sound deadener on each of these bigger ribs of the cage. It feels pretty sturdy though. I don't know if it would need it, but it won't take much, like a little inch by inch. To get to the point where I can install all this stuff, um, just uh, put the silos in there, a little bit of that. Um, I've got this gasket material that I had put on one cabinet, but not the other, so I need to put it on the other one as well. Now, as far as crossover placement goes, um, what I had in mind was basically just, you know, attaching it to the terminal cup here and mounting it right in the center of the box here. Now, I can't mount it against foil directly because obviously we don't want to go shorten everything out. I was thinking about maybe even putting like a, a piece of the silos if I have some left over you know, kind of like stick it to this too. And it's non-conductive. Man, I'm looking forward to this. I, it's not gonna be too much longer. I could turn these bad boys on. I'm really anxious to plug them in and listen to them. All right, well, coffee break's almost over. Um, time to go to work. I'm finally at the point where I can start assembling these. This is my favorite part 
bar none. I love the assembly of hardware. <laughs> the sound deadening and dampening in these cabinets is above and beyond anything I've ever done in any cabinets. So I'm interested to hear what that sounds like. Uh, the piezo tweeters, um, I've used them in the past, but I've never gone so far as to try to, you know, make them anti-resonant and put that resistor on there that, you know, creates a load to the crossover and the amplifier. Uh, so that's really interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing that. Um, I've also never, you know, damped the, uh, or sound deadened the woofers before. And I had just enough of that sound deadening pad stuff. I mean, literally, I used every little sliver of it. And uh, I had just enough to put eight perfect little rectangles around here. Um, cabinets, front, back, top, bottom, sides, it's all sound deadened, the, the brace. Um, I've got the fiberglass insulation that came with the speakers here to use. So uh, this is gonna be pretty cool. I think, I think that they're gonna sound pretty good. I don't expect them to be pumping out a lot of bass, but I, I anticipate them sounding decent. Um, I'm not gonna measure them today. I'm just gonna do a little bit of listening. And you, know, you guys, if you have your headphones on or your, um, you got your home theater running, your stereo system running, uh, it should, you should be able to hear them pretty good. And put your comments down below what you think of them, what they sound like. Maybe throw out a guess as far as what the frequency response is going to be like. Um, that would be interesting to see. Yeah, I'll save the the review, the measuring, the critical listening for another day. Uh, whether or not the tweeters stay like this, I don't know. Whether or not these woofers stay like that, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping that everything just kind of works out though, and that I just put them together and never have to open them again. That would be really cool. So anyway, uh, yeah, cool. Let's get going on the reassembly. Uh, this is gonna be fun. All right, well, here we go. They're all built. I haven't turned them on yet. They're hooked up and ready to go. So I hope you got your headphones on or your AVR on or your stereo on or something. Um, this should be exciting. I don't know what to expect. Start out at minus 25 dB. This is uh, Natural Beat Records. I'll go ahead and put it minus 20, let them warm up a little bit. In restless dreams, I walked alone Through narrow streets of cobblestone Neat the halo of a street lamp I turned my car to the cold and then When 
my eyes was dead by the flash of a neon light. The falling leaves drip by the window. The autumn leaves are red from gold. I see your lips, the summer kisses. The sunburn hands I used to hold. I'll try to turn it up a little bit. I play the blues. Move up to minus 15. We'll go up to minus 10. Turn it up a little bit. Let's go to minus five. self-protect mode on the amp. That is interesting. wonder why. I search for happiness in your face. Well, that was weird. It went into protect mode when I had it turned up. They sound pretty decent.
cigarette holder which wakes me over my shoulder he digs me out captain my sad and all baby shall we go out step and careful amigo your flipping speaks Latin my sad and Let's turn on the digital. We're going to do a CD. So at this low volume, they sound tight. Tight as in, sounds like they want more power, but that they're fully under control at the same time. Let's see what Natalie's voice sounds like. Well, it's definitely not airy. It's not sparkly. It's very restrained. In a spectacle of wealth and poverty In the diamond market, the scarlet milk of coffee That they just rolled out to me And I walk these streets In the madhouse, the side of the candy Where a wild and mystic talk have I been lost inside myself and my own life? It was like mesmerized by what my eyes see. Have I been wrong? Have I been wise to shut my eyes and play along? It was like. Yeah, it's uh, it's shutting down. It's going into protect mode. I got a feeling that those uh, piezo tweeters ain't working out so good. I could barely even hear them, so that's pretty weird. But I do have the horn set up, and I've got a couple of other ideas. Well, there you have it, the Mini Mach 1. Now, it does need some work. Unfortunately, this piezo tweeter is not going to work out like I hoped it would. It's uh, something about it the amp doesn't like. But, yeah, it doesn't sound really good. I could, just for schnicks, I could try to uh, snip that resistor and see what happens.
the ups and downs of speaker building. Sometimes things don't work out as planned, right? Um, all right, so I've snipped those wires on that resistor for the piezo. So we're gonna just run the straight piezo off the crossover and see what it sounds like. It already sounds better. That's amazing. Those piezos are a lot louder now, much more noticeable. We're at minus 15 on digital. Hope that problem's gone. Receiver does not like those tweeters. That's really odd. Well, trouble in paradise. I got to figure that out. If you guys got any ideas what might be causing that problem, drop them in the comments down below. At this point, since I just slammed these together, um, I'm not sure what's causing it. I don't know if it's the tweeter. I don't know if it's... I know it's not the... Um, the, the mid bass driver I had running in those energies, the 3.1s for a while. So I know it's not those. Um, it can only be the crossover or the tweeter. My money would be on the tweeter. Um, like I said, it was a super cheap tweeter. Main reason I got it was because of the look of it. And I do have a couple of ideas as far as um, I think what I'll do next, actually, next video, next video, I think what I'm going to do is try to use, I'm going to repurpose the RCA tweeters. These were pretty loud and uh, yeah, I think that I can easily glue these on the back of those horns so I can, you know, basically take off the piezo and put this in there and have a regular tweeter going and we'll see if that fixes the problem yeah this was uh an interesting experiment um didn't go quite as planned so uh that's pretty interesting um egg in my face right uh well it happens you know not everything goes as planned so it's part of speaker building high hopes Oof, totally deflated now but um i'll get them working from what i've heard so far though um, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, I was worried about low bass extension from the sound of it. I'm thinking that these are probably hitting, I don't know, I mean, at least, at least 70 hertz, I'm sure. Um, well, I'm not sure until I measure it, but 
they sound every bit as bassy as the original uh, realistic um, whooper that was in there. So, yeah, actually they sound a little bassier to me. I don't know if it's a, just a, you know, my imagination playing tricks on me or what. But that being said, wow, this was fun. It's a big day, a lot of work putting in the, these with the assembly. Um, I appreciate you watching as always. Uh, I enjoy your comments, so go ahead and put your comments down below. And on that note, Mini Mach 1, right now, it's a fail. Maybe when I fix it, it'll be thumbs up. We'll see. All right. Take it easy.